Round two. Ladies, we are back. <laughs> did, I, did I frighten you? Sorry about that, okay? So, welcome to Weight Measure Part 2. Welcome to us, Weight Measure Part what? 2. Um, now, somebody would have said, Mr. Emmanuel, why not just, you know, teach all these things at once? Let it get, let's get it over with. No, 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 no. No, no, I, I, it's not going to work that way, okay? So, reason is that, um, whenever I'm teaching, I don't focus on the high flyers, okay? What I mean by high flyers is, you know, there are some, there are some pupils that have high assimilative levels. What that simply means is that there are some people that the way they understand things is very, very fast. If you as a teacher focuses more on those people, you realize that the ones that don't really understand that fast, they will be lost. So why I'm taking it bit by bit is because I'm trying to carry along those who their understanding level is not that fast compared to those that their understanding level is what? Extremely fast. Like there's a child you can teach everything about weight in, in one hour, they will understand everything and move on. But there are some that you have to take it step by step. And me, it's those ones I'm looking out for. Yeah, so it's those ones that me, I like to teach. You see those students that are not doing very well. I so much like to teach them because to be able to teach those kind of people, it requires patience. You know, it requires patience and it requires that you have to take it one after the other. Not just come and give you express and then at the end of the day I might have taught you 10 topics and you don't understand one. No, no, no. Even if it is two topics I taught you in 100 hours and you understand me very well. I'm okay. Compared to when I teach you 100 topics, I even understand one. That is one challenge our educational system is having. But we believe that gradually we get to that level. So please, why I'm taking it one after the other? is so that I can carry everyone along. Now, for example, in our last class, we talked about converting from what? Higher unit to what? Lower unit. Now, those ones would have been able to practice questions on it and they must have understood it. So today, now, we're going to look at the reverse, which is what? Conversion from a lower unit to what? A higher unit. Like I said, why I still love this thing is because this thing is going to form the basis of everything we are going to do. That is why I see on this board. Even this table, I made reference to it in our last class. Please and please, if you've not learned this table, go and learn it. To, you know, when I'm warning my children, this is how my ear. Go and learn it. I am sounding like a bell now. If you've not learned this table, go and learn it. Alright? So, it's going to help you. Without wasting much time, how do we convert from a lower unit to a higher unit? Now, let's read it. says that to convert from a lower unit, say grams to a higher unit, say kilograms, the key word is what? Divide. Now, if you notice, when we were converting from a higher unit to a lower unit, we multiplied. But, now, we are converting from a lower unit to a higher unit. It's the same thing we are going to do. We do what? We divide. Divide the lower unit quantity by the equivalent multiplier of the lower unit to get the higher unit equivalent. For instance, the equivalent multiplier of the gram relative to kilogram is 1,000. Since 1,000 grams make 1 kilogram, okay? Therefore, if you are to convert from grams to kilogram, you divide the grams, the grams quantity by 1,000 to get the kilogram equivalent. So it's very, very straightforward, right? So what is actually asking us to do is for us to reverse. Now, you know that, you, you first of all, but for, but for you to be able to reverse, you have to first of all know how, you have to first of all know this your table, all right? So now, when you are conversant with this table, then you can go and do what? Be able to do what? Solve this. For example, now, in your number one, let's quickly get straight to it. The backbone is this. So this first one now says, change 400 what, centigrams to what? Grams. Now, we know that very well, the, 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 the centigram to grams. So the first thing I'm going to ask another is, how many centigrams gives you one gram? 100, right? So 100 centigrams 
will give you what? 1 gram. So that means if we are to convert 400 centigrams to 2 grams, are we going to multiply or divide? Fantabulous. We'll do what? We'll divide. So we're going to do what? 400 what? Centigrams divided by what? 100. Am I communicating? 400 what? You know we are converting from a lower unit now to a higher unit. Right? So, you know, it, 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 like I said here, all this grammar that we're speaking here means that if you want to change this lower unit to a higher unit, first of all, tell us how many of these lower units will give us this higher unit. Once you're able to figure out how many of these lower units will give us this higher unit, you divide that thing, that this quantity, by how many of these will give you this. And now we know that 100 centigrams will give us 1 gram. So we have 400 centigrams. To be able to do it, we divide it by what? 100. Because 100 centigrams gives you what? 1 gram. So 0 will cancel 0. 0 will cancel 0. Centigram will cancel centigram. So the answer is what? 4 grams. Answer. I know somebody's like, it's actually very easy. Of course, it's extremely easy. You know, as long as. You know your table, all right? So number two, we have change 6,000 grams to kilogram. First things first, how many grams will give us one kilogram? Well, according to our table, it is what? 1,000, fantastic. 1,000 grams gives you what? One kilogram. So now that you have 6,000 grams, it certainly means that you're going to do what? 6,000 grams, Divided by what? 1,000. See, hello guys, I, I, let me say it again. It all boils down to this, please. It all boils down to this table. It all boils down to you knowing this table, all right? So, uh, zero counts to zero, zero counts to zero, zero counts to zero, grams counts to grams. You have what? Six kilograms. This is your answer. Pretty simple. So, 6,000 grams to kilograms, what? Six grams. Now, the next thing, Change 10,000 grams. Sorry, change 10,000 kilograms to what? Tons. Now, the question is how many grams, how many kilograms rather, will give you one ton? We already know that it is what? 1,000 what? Kilogram will give you what? One ton. Right? So, as a result, we're going to have 10,000 kilograms divided by what? 1,000 kilogram comes to kilogram, zero comes to zero, zero comes to zero, zero comes to zero. So what do we have? We have what? 10 tons. It's very simple. Now I think we can come up with another question again. Let's say for example now, change, change, um, let's try to make two laws. Change 7,350 what? Grams to kilograms. Now, if you notice, you know that this particular question now has, uh, it does, it's still the same thing. So now we're going to have, first of all, how many grams give us one kilogram? We know it's 1,000. 1,000 grams gives us what? One kilogram, all right? So now if you want to solve, we're going to have what? 7,350 what? Grams divided by what? 1,000. 1,000. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yes, 1,000 grams. So now, to be able to divide, because it's in numbers now, you cannot come and cancel this, cancel this, cancel this. So, just to stay with me. Now, how many zeros do we have here? We have three zeros, have we? So, we count three decimal places to the left. That means we we'll start from here, count three decimal places. One, two, three, because it's division. Yeah, so that means our answer will be what? 7 kilograms, 350 grams. Or it will be 7.350 kg. Answer. So you see, it's very, very easy. Just know this, the rest is easy. So what I'm going to do now, write it down, and then when you are done, request for your classwork. I'll send it to you. Keep learning and don't forget to watch. Like, share, and subscribe. If you've already subscribed, please don't subscribe. Tell your friends about it. Like I said, don't be a stingy learner. Don't be a stingy learner. Tell your friends about it and let them come and learn too. 
and learn and let them do what let them learn you know and see that mass is not as difficult as they thought so just for us to just get one or two things right all right so getting one or two things right simply means just one or two things that we need to know we know them and then we'll put them in order so in our next class we're still going to talk about something extremely what simple so until then keep learning and what stay out of what trouble see you